We've got that Mommy Magic, the Mother Show on Magic 89.9. 10.08 is the time. Welcome back to the Mother Show here on Magic 89.9. My name is Ricky. And I'm Andy. From Utah, this is Della Ma. From Utah, I can just imagine Della you, Della, just running through the cabinet. And just, this is Della Ma. <laughs> it's so tricky. No, no. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, it's season five. It's yeah. episode one. Della Mar's in Utah, but it's okay because we patched her through. We put her in a closet and she's there. With her microphone <laughs> and everything. You put me in the closet. Yeah, we're like, Delamar, do the show! You can't not do the show. No, so so she's here. Um, we're, uh, we're kicking things off with a guest. She is a mom. She's a wife. She's a best-selling author, like I said. She's a supermodel. So we have with us Superwoman Risa Manangkiltrillo joining us today. Hi, Thanks Risa. Thanks for having me. Yay, Risa. You're here. I know. <laughs> I can't believe you're here, Risa. Why? I'm so happy to be here. Like I told you, I have, you know, I, I've, I've always been so amazed with radio DJs and I'm so killing to be here in your booth today. Because you know what? When we were, when we were, Ricky and I were messaging each other. It's like, you know what? Let's try to get Risa. Yeah, but you know, she's so busy. Oh, I don't know if she'll do it. Yeah. But you're here. Yeah. And I'm happy. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who don't, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't know Risa Manangkiltrilio. She is the founder of Happy Skin. Yes. Happy Skin is... Majority of what's inside my makeup kit. Same Aww. here. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, I can tell you the first time I heard about Happy Skin was a couple of years ago before I got married. Uh, my, my sister in law now said that she found this cute gift that she could give to all the, the close women in her life and they look like crayon lipsticks. Yeah. And I they have super cute packaging. <laughs> super cute packaging. They have the witty title. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they, they come in really nice shades for Filipinas. Whether you're light-skinned, whether you're medio dark-skinned Filipina, it'll work on you. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's nice. And then she said, the clincher is, it's local. Yes. So that's Risa. That was Risa's oh, brainchild. That's Risa. <laughs> no. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Galing. So we have her here with us. We're going to be talking about stay-at-home moms. Um, uh, moms who, who do it full-time. Uh, whether it be from the house or from the office. And I just thought, you know, what a great guest. Yeah, you know, there's so many questions to ask you. Because there's you've done so much in your life already. You know how... you I Imagine balancing work and family or the, the decisions that you had to make getting yeah. where you are right now. Yeah. I mean, those things weren't easy. Have you ever been full-time uh, away cor- from work? Corporate. Oh, you know what? Um, I never did corporate. Never. Yes. Okay. And so I took up. Um, I graduated from business management yes. from Ateneo. But although I got uh, corporate job offers, I guess you can say it was a business decision to get into modeling because I was dabbling into modeling already when I was in college. But um, I felt, of course, with modeling, I could earn more and the kind of um, relationships and networks I could build and learn yeah. so much. Yeah. And looking back, uh, you know, I don't think I would. Happy Skin wouldn't be the same if I didn't go through all those experiences. I got yeah. to meet all the um, uh, beauty editors, the yeah. magazine editors, the influencers, the people in the beauty industry, mm-hmm. um, models, and um, photographers, stylists. All the people we're working with today, I met them during my time as a model. Yeah. So it, it's it's so funny because I was reading your book, and you j- just to get just just to sort of backtrack a bit. Um, you have always been so into makeup, yeah. even as a kid. Yes. Right? So t- tell us a little bit more about your background, how you got into it. Um, maybe, I, I guess I've always been in the quest for beauty because even as a kid, I was teased a lot. Um, what would they tease you for? Yeah. Lisa? What? That you were too no, tall? No, no, no. <laughs> they would tease me for my skin color. I remember as young as, huh. I think, five or six, I had a neighbor he was in fact my crush, but he would tease me so much and call me across the gate and shout, Negra, Negra. <gasps> yeah. What? So, you know, but I guess at that time, I, I, I don't know, you know, thinking back, I didn't feel, it didn't affect me to the life that, to the point that I would be incapable of doing anything in my yeah. life. But, yeah. you know, I remember marching across the street and I saw his dad tinkering under the hood of their car mm-hmm. and I, I approached his dad and said, Tito, Blah blah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, he he, he called me Negra, and 
I just wanted to call him out for what he did, um, and I just walked back to my house feeling, you know, good about myself. That I, even if no one was around me to defend me, I, I, I was able to stand up for myself. Thinking back, and I guess I just realized at a young age it wasn't negative to have brown skin because mm-hmm. my dad is Moreno, yeah. Yeah. my mom is more fair skin, and my siblings got took after her and. I, I saw my dad, you know, he, he did well, um, whether at work or in sports, and he's such a great dad and yeah. husband. So why should it, you know, color be a hindrance to anything? Yeah. So I've always, you know, well, because I was teased a lot, and even when I got to grade school and high school, my friends would tease me as, um, not just for my skin color, because I was so thin and scrawny, they would call me Somalian. What? or Yeah. Wow. Or um, Shush for mm-hmm. Shushmita Sen, who uh-huh. was the first Indian who won Miss Universe that time. Wow. Um, all these names. And... Um, and that's why maybe I was always, you know, looking for an answer. How do I make myself look better and people stop teasing me? Yeah. And I remember I was, you know, tr- into trying so many products. Of course, I would always tinker and raid my mom's dresser, mm. smelling perfumes. <laughs> I was putting anti-cellulite cellulite cream, cream? at grade school because what? I wanted to understand, what's this supposed to do? I was, <laughs> I know. Why does mom keep doing this? <laughs> what's this for? And, um, but I was so experimental. Experimental. It. There was one time. I tried putting something on my face that wasn't meant for the face and I woke up my half of my face was burnt. Ah! So for our Christmas pictures I was posing like that. Oh no, with your hand over your cheek. Yeah. So what? it was a different personal care product, not for the face, for another. <laughs> and wow. I thought, oh maybe it could make my skin smooth. <laughs> wow. So That's yeah, how you but yeah. So yeah, but you know it's the little experiments or mistakes that always make you one step Towards your goal You yeah. realize what works What doesn't work mm-hmm. Then um, I have also got into writing And I, be, I, I, I am a long time Beauty columnist For the Philippine yes. Star And it's so Amazing how Readers would send in Through email mm-hmm. Before mm-hmm. Um, All their beauty questions And I was the type of columnist That when I wanted to give an answer, I would try products. Like, I wouldn't rely on press kits. Okay, it was it's recommended or this, yeah. they say this product does this. Sometimes I would go to the mall and really look for other options and try to test which would be the best. So that when I give an answer, it's something I feel confident about and I really test it. And I have something, options to offer them, whatever yes. the price point or skin type. So I was that kind of um, beauty columnist. So. Yeah. I, and then as a model, I got to work with so many makeup artists. Mm-hmm. It's you know, modeling you feel like it's so glamorous on the magazine and the runway, but it was actually during the peak of my modeling career that mm-hmm. my skin was at its worst. I had so many bumps because of all the makeup. Yeah, because of all the makeup. Yeah, okay, exactly. So I, I, it was like a vicious cycle. I put on makeup to look good for the runway or for photo shoots, then I come home, take it out, and I still, you know, the my skin looks really yeah. bad. The joy is not there. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so there and working with so many makeup artists backstage I got to really try all the brands and um, got to learn more about makeup how it works I'm the type because when I sit on the makeup chair I just don't sit close my eyes and have my makeup done I really ask what's that for why is this better than this Why? what's yes. the format of this oh how do you apply it a real student yeah. of the game like I there. love it <laughs> yes so I was very curious and I get because I've always wanted uh-huh. to understand beauty and yeah. cosmetics yeah. and mm-hmm. even skincare so so there yeah I, I guess you know um I've always liked makeup and skincare or anything, you know, for beauty. Yeah. Did your parents, are your, were your parents a factor in any way in keeping you in that path? Um, so sticking to what you believe in, sticking to what you want to do. Did they ever try to, oh, Risa, baka you want to become a lawyer? Or oh, Risa, baka a yeah. doctor? Actually, my parents um, wanted me to become a doctor and a, or a lawyer. Oh, mm-hmm. so very right traditional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, um, I, I guess most of our parents really had that little dream. Oh, I wish I had a doctor in the family or a lawyer yeah, in the family. Yes. But uh, although they never forced me, um, I'm happy to grow up with parents that allowed me to be who, you who I am. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's also a big factor that plays a big factor in, you know, wherever I am today because they didn't, you know, um, say anything negative or question what. This, the decisions I made. That's right. It's 1018. If you're just listening to us, we have Risa Manangkil Trillo with us. Delamar, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm listening to every, every single word she says. Um, I'm so curious 
what she thinks about beauty. What is what is beauty to you? That's a good question. Sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, oh my gosh, I, I couldn't hear it. The, I Risa, couldn't hear Della Mar. Risa, so, uh, sorry, Risa can't hear Del. But Del asked, "What is what is beauty? What is your definition of beauty?" Wow. <laughs> See, I, I told you. Bini, bini, Pilipinas. I know. Delamar wishes she was here because Delamar asks all the best questions. Yeah. So she's asking you, Risa, what is your definition of beauty? Well, growing up, of course, as a kid, you, I grew up thinking, oh, beauty is about looking good, having a pretty dress, mm-hmm. or um, having a, a great smile, or long, black, shiny hair na pang commercial. But you know, as I got I, as I got older, now my definition of beauty is the intangible, the things you can't really see. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've met so many beautiful women mm-hmm. and beautiful moms that made me realize, oh, beauty is really beyond, you know, just the surface. Yeah, it's about you know um, the kind of life you live, having the right values, being kind, being passionate, intelligence. Um, you know, the things you can't see or touch are really w- the most beautiful things. Sorry, did, did you did you just say that you learned all these things from from talking with other moms? Yeah, growing up, you you meet all kinds of women. I meet different models. I meet makeup artists. I meet editors, or I meet co moms, or I meet, um, you know, classmates and. Mm-hmm. You 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 real your your definition of beauty sh- changes and gets reshaped as you get older. Um, it's not just the physical things anymore, and you realize what's really more important. Yeah, isn't that funny? How it's it's sort of like um, Del. It's sort of like a micro of the show or a macro of the show where you just keep on talking to other moms. Yeah, who get it? Yeah, yeah, and then it touches but- you, and you can't go back. You know what I mean? Yeah, it it widens your it widens your definition of many things about motherhood or being a woman. Actually, it's not just about motherhood. Yet. And what I like about being Happy Skin is one of their their endorsers that I love. I gravitate towards her is Catherine Bernardo. Oh, I yeah. love her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's yeah, I I just love her face. I am in love with her face. It's. It's beautiful, and I love that you know. Hindi ka nagsasawa sa face niya, and I love that because I have uh, happy skin products in my in my um in my makeup kit too. I have the 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 lipstick, and what I love about the product is that I understand that beauty is more than just about looking good, but there is something else to be said when a product really works and enhances your beauty. There's yeah. like. The lipstick that is just perfect for your for your skin tone, and all of a sudden that lipstick can make you feel confident to yeah. face the world. Yeah. Diba? Yeah. Actually, every time I'm at the stores and I get to chat with customers, that's the most fulfilling for me. I, I, I see a customer and she's shopping for the makeup she'll use on her wedding day oh, or a first-time nice. yeah. lipstick makeup user and she ends up buying a red color she never imagined wearing. Uh-huh. But because it suits her, then you know she gets surprised. Or sometimes there were customers before that would come to our counters with um, prescriptions from doctors because... Mm-hmm. Uh, their OBGYN or Derma would recommend our products because really yeah, yeah. so that that for me is such an amazing affirmation Aww. of what we do and you know I would sometimes also get messages from you know an old classmate in college and she'd message me hey you know what I swiped on um, the girl boss lippy or this this lippy today and it just made me feel confident and ready for the boardroom meeting or to face my day you know Aww, I think that's nice. the magic of makeup um, yeah. it just doesn't make you physically you know, enhance your appearance, but there's just something about swiping on a lippy that can make you just change today. I love that. I love that. Let's quote that. Let's put that on Twitter. <laughs> we should have <laughs> <got> a lippy. <laughs> yeah, that's. I, I can. Can we ask you real quick before we pause for a break? Can we ask you what's the what's the what was the process of naming your brand Happy Skin? I think when you you come up with a brand or any Mm -hmm. business, the brand name um, has to be very clear about what it offers. Mm -hmm. Especially today, there's so many brands, there's so much noise and clutter on social media or when you get to a mall. So it has to be crystal clear what the brand offers. And um, when we were developing the brand also... I felt a tagline was very important because when you see happy skin, oh, maybe it's a derma clinic or it's a lotion or it's a yeah. facial wash. Uh-huh. I mean, you can't okay. tell. So I wanted a tagline that 
said makeup that cares for the skin in one single line in one breath you knew what the brand was about nice. and that was very very important yeah no happy skin straightforward I love I really it, love it. it. I know. can you just uh, I don't know if she can hear me I, can hear I, I love the idea of happy skin because the skin is the biggest organ of our body yes you yes, are go- you were born with it you are going to you know pass on with it and so taking care and the first thing that people see is really your your skin yeah and and not not to not to say anything bad but some makeup kasi talaga and especially in the olden days well olden days olden <laughs> days of yore <laughs> because back then they didn't think about parang it was the woman was just a a, a white canvas and then you just paint on her mm-hmm. but I love that fun. happy skin goes down to the basics of this is good for your skin Mm-mm. and without the makeup your skin is happy diba? Yeah. <laughs> which is what we all want after we take off that makeup that we still feel good about ourselves. You know, when we started, the brand started in 2013. And during that time, the uh, lands- the makeup landscape was dominated 90% imported brands. Okay. And I think as a model, a lot of my frustration also stemmed from that because you put on makeup and it's just not a match for the Filipina skin or the mm-hmm, Asian yeah. skin because a lot of these imported brands were developed and created in American, European, uh, Canadian countries. Mm-hmm. So I would put on a mascara feeling so beautiful and so oomph mm. and it would say uh, smudge proof and then at the end of the night when I go home I have panda eyes na pala because ah. the product couldn't withstand our weather. Yeah. Maybe it could withstand a four seasons country but not in Manila. Ganun pala yon. So even if it's That's a smudge proof not necessarily completely smudge proof. Yeah, it depends also in on the humidity. Yeah, you know? and that's why a lot of skin, even when it comes to skincare, a lot of the brands were meant for four seasons weather. So there are some, let's say, moisturizers. When I put them on, they're so, so heavy, I end up breaking out. Mm, so yeah. it really was so important for Happy Skin to really create products that were meant for Filipinas in this kind of weather so that it really withstands all the heat the humidity mm-hmm. and you know your 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 beauty doesn't melt yeah now <laughs> and the I, I love that because it's it true does, yeah. uh, it does right it, it, yeah. and it, it, your confidence you melts to. together with the makeup <laughs> it does it does Oh, yeah, and, and then, you know, the what, the beauty bloggers uh, nowadays, like, they would try makeup. Th- these are beauty bloggers in the U.S., and they would, you know, most of them are in California. And they would always talk about how, oh, okay, this is great, but I'll see if, you know, it can take the humidity of California. Mm. But California's humidity is nothing like the Philippines. Yeah. And so, it has to be a product that can withstand the environment in which the people wearing it are going to use it in, right? <laughs> so it's a very thoughtful, very mindfully Mindful, made yes. product, right? Because it's not just to add color to your face and then you're done. It's also taking care of your skin. It, it has it's a follow through. Skin, yeah. It has a follow through. I love that. Agaling, no? Thank you for being here, Risa. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 1026. We're talking to Risa Manangkiltrillo of uh, Happy Skin. She also has a best-selling book out. It's called Read My Lips. Um, it it uh, it went as high as number three. Yes, National Bookstore, and it's Best still selling. in the top ten. Yeah. yeah, I just I, I I just saw it over the weekend. We're giving out copies, by the way. Yeah, we're giving out two copies on Instagram, mm-hmm. and all you have to do is actually I'm just about to post it now. Oh, sige, so sige, go. all you have to do is just tell us your favorite shade of lipstick. Yes, from, from Happy, Happy Skin. Skin. So, so tell us that the name. Easy. We're going to talk about the names, huh? And how you oh, yeah. name all of these amazing shades. I actually, shades. you know, one of the questions I want to know also, which you can think about later. Take or it, go. we can improve in this question. Mm. Um, it's like, how did, like, did Happy Skin start after when your kids were older? Yeah. Right? As a mom, at yeah, what stage in my life? Yes, okay. at what, what stage, stage in your life did you decide, hey, I want to start a business and be yeah. devoted to this? Because we're talking all about the shifting of a woman when you have kids, when you start your own family. So where were you in this journey yeah. of womanhood when you started your baby Happy Skin? Hi, Harper! <laughs> Risa, before we hit the break, Andy asked you, in what stage of motherhood were you in when Happy Skin was born? Yeah. Um, I had. I remember... That was 2013. I got married 2011. And um, 
I remember even before Happy Skin, I already wanted to start a brand. And um, I remember, you know, it was one morning and I was looking at myself in the mirror, putting on makeup, and I felt a bit sad because putting it on, I still didn't feel better about myself. And because my skin was really still so bad, even if I tried to cover it up, um, at that point, I didn't have my two daughters, but I had my eldest son. Mm -hmm. I think the difference um, between starting a business when you're married and not yet married is... I think there's more at risk when you're already married. You're, mm -hmm. Of course, you want to be stable. Your income isn't just for you. It's for your family, the future of your kids. So my advice whenever women ask me is when should they start a business? I mean, start when you're young because there's less risk. Um, you can afford to make those mistakes. Yeah. Not like when you're married na and... You know, you have to think about f the future of other people and not just your own. There's time involved as well. You don't yeah. want to be wasting time, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, but you know, when when Happy Skin started, I had no doubt. Like there was not an inch in my bone that doubted it. Like, mm -hmm. in fact, it was our joint savings, my Paolo and I, that we put in, and you know. I, I, I guess I feel really blessed also that I had his support. I think that's one of the biggest assets a woman can have. That I asked permission because I knew mm, starting a business yeah. would change our lives. That's true. And it would be unfair that I just do it without thinking about him. He had to understand the commitment and what I'd be sacrificing. So, you know, to women or moms out there, the the yes or the the support of your husband is a very big and important asset. So, and he, you know, he's like, let's do it. I mean, so we put in our joint savings as wow. part of her. So he he has also has a sense of pride, and you know, every yeah. time he sees it, parang he's not the one hands on with it, but uh -huh. he he also feels very proud because he saw how gung ho I was about it, and you know, parang there was really no hesitation I felt, even if I was at the stage in my life that I just got married, mm -hmm. we wanted to have kids, so two thousand. Oh no, sorry. 2012, I had Celestia na pala. And then 2013. Mommy brain. I know, sorry, sorry. Mommy brain. <laughs> you have it all the time. You I have, have to it count my time. kids and when they were born. <laughs> But, but um, so 2012, I already had my eldest daughter. Then 2013, happy skin. Then I got pregnant with my second daughter. Wow. Okay. So that, that was hard because this was um, the first few years of a business are the most crucial. Mm -hmm. Crucial. And your team is still so small. Yeah. So, I don't remember taking a break. Like, even if I was pregnant or in the hospital, I was still thinking about the business and what whatever needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something moms have to take into consideration. Um, a lot of women want to leave their corporate life thinking, oh, I'm going to have more time if I'm an entrepreneur. And okay. I just want to give the reality check that that's not true. In fact, the days that it's a holiday or it's a weekend, you're thinking about your business more, especially if you're in retail. Really? Yes, because it's Saturday, Sunday. That's when all the people are at the malls. So you need to think about sales. You need to think about, is there enough foot traffic? Oh. Or, and when it's a holiday, that's when Filipino culture, we're such a... Go shopping or go Shopping to the is a national yeah. pastime. So <laughs> there's, no, there's no break, especially for your mind. You're thinking about it 24-7. And I really liken it to having another baby. It, you really have to give your more than 100%. So basically, 2012, wow. you had you gave birth. 2013, yeah. you had happy, happy skin. skin. And then 2014, you gave birth again. Yeah. So you have three babies. <laughs> three <laughs> years. Three, yeah. three births. Yeah. <laughs> three years. <laughs> Grabe. But how was that? I mean, starting a business and you had two young kids. And you're on a was roll. It? Yeah. You're on a roll. You know, I don't remember it being traumatic. Um, I think it's important also that every woman has a good support system. And for me, that's Paolo. A lot of things, uh, a lot of people always think na, you know, maybe you have your life, you know, you have it all. And I think it's really important. It boils down to having something as simple as a good support system. And Pao does, supports me in a way that I can do everything I accomplish. Uh, I really, I, I know it sounds cliche, but he's really the wind beneath my wings. Um, you know, even when I was writing that book, my gosh, I mean, <laughs> actually that book came, well, the the offer came in while I was doing my MBA. Okay. As I took up an executive MBA at AIM. 
And Summit approached and said, oh, you know, we came out from a meeting with Sandra Ramos of National Bookstore and she su- suggested we do our first female business book. And we've always had at the back of our mind, a Risa Manangkil Trillia business book. So wow. they met up with me and I didn't want to let go of the chance, even if I knew I was juggling a business and my MBA. Because, you know, I, I loved reading growing up. Mm-hmm. And yeah. parang, will this chance ever come? I mean, strike while the iron's yeah. hot. Right? Yeah. And you were a columnist. Yes. Yeah. I, I really like writing and reading. So, you know, to have the chance and get offered to write a book, I, I took it. I did it. And Paolo was so supportive that, you know, there were nights talaga that I hardly got sleep. I was writing or I would... Um, stay in the AIM library until because 24 hours in library mm. dun. Wow. he'd fetch me my araw na grabe and, yeah so um, it was you know the kind of support he gave really whatever accomplishments I have it's him I, it's I know him. Delamar are you there? yeah I'm here I, I'm, I'm listening <laughs> I know you, I know you want to ask about Risa and Paolo and how they met yeah <laughs> This is, I, I know you you want to you want to dig into the roots right? and their marriage you're going to dig into go, the roots go, go ahead it. Oh, so how did you meet your husband? <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna try to. Okay, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. um, I met him in Fiamma. I'm not sure if all the listeners remember. I do, Risa. I remember that was the Fiamma, one in Jupiter. Jupiter. Yeah. By, by the way, to Carlo Trillo who's listening, and <laughs> hey, Carlo. Jamie Lassiste, they're all like, oh, Risa. yeah, Fiamma. Fr- What's that? Fresh Friday. Yeah. F-F-F. So <laughs> that's where I met him. So um, it's funny because. He he didn't want to know me more through nightlife. So mm-hmm. he asked me out separately during the day for coffee. Because mm-hmm. uh, we were meeting because I was president of PMAP then. And he said, you know, um, I'm thinking about coming up with this Fiamma Elite Ladies card. Can we meet about it? Yeah, and I want to type with PMAP. <laughs> wow. So afternoon coffee, blah, blah, blah. And when we started meeting, he kept asking so many questions about my family, college, because we both went to Ateneo Pala and I ne- we never crossed paths. So you went to this meeting thinking it was a business meeting. Yeah, and he was asking me a, a lot about me. <laughs> yeah. Coffee dates pala. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> and the thing, Date the clincher pala. there is he doesn't take coffee. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. But he... Decided because he want he, he wanted he said you know I I wanted you to take me seriously because if I keep making an attempt at night during <laughs> more time going to happen. <laughs> you won't take me seriously so I, he wanted to meet me um, and right. there um, so now I always fool, fool him na oh na yung fiamma elite ladies card <laughs> never <laughs> nang Ang galing ng ano niya, ano ng style niya. Yeah. It's so funny. So now I, I always fool him about that. Panggap pa siyang coffee drinker. Yeah. Hanip. But now I've converted him. His coffee is oh, now really? our morning bonding. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So has he, has he always been very supportive since the start? Always. What is it like being married to Paolo Trilio? Wow. You said, you said he was the wind beneath your wings. I think it's important for a woman to be with a guy or a life partner that you admire like even if he's in the world of basketball he manages the PBA team Meralco right. Balls and before Ateneo um, I always learn so much from him I, I you know I, I really like have this awe and hang for my husband na he's so his liter- leadership he, his good values parang I always feel inspired after a conversation with him even if he's just telling me what happened in Ateneo or PBA or in Meralco Balls and um, I think that's so important um and I learned so much from him, even if I'm in the world of cosmetics and he's in the world of basketball, yeah. that I can apply in my own business or in my own life. And yeah. that's what I love about him. So important. Okay, so we had a, a few callers earlier, and I wrote down the questions wow. for them. So um, somebody called, her name was Jan, and she was she was um, in a stage in her life where she's, parang she... She doesn't know what to do yet. So her questions were like, am I doing it right? Where do I start? If I do um, end up having another child, do I stop going to work? work yeah, altogether. So all together. So what can you say to like moms who are in that position where they don't know what to do? Corporate? Working mom? Stay at home? So she doesn't have kids yet or she already has she already one. Has, yeah. And she wants That's to another have another one. one. And she's a working mom. Yeah. Uh, in the she's corporate... in the corporate world. Wow. Because you did it all. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Except for corporate. Yeah. Except for corporate. I didn't take but, that traditional yeah. path. But um, I think that's something she has to discuss with her husband. Because mm-hmm. it's a joint decision they're going to make. If she wants to leave the corporate world, 
getting into a business will always have its risk at the start and you don't always get your investment back at the start. So they have to be financially ready for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they want another baby, that's another expense. That's the reality. Mm-hmm. It's yes. expensive to have more kids. So I think they have to um, look into that. They have to weigh their options. Um, like for me and Paolo, uh, we we still want, we're still open to have another kid and another baby. And when I found the opportunity na, you know, I've always wanted to take my postgraduate studies. Like, e- even when I graduated from college, I always wanted to pursue higher education. Mm-hmm. Okay. And when I found that time, like, I felt it was the perfect time. Um, I asked Paolo, you know, I know we were supposed to have, we're, you know, it always was at the back of our head that to have another kid, but do you think I can take my MBA first? Mm-hmm. So it's something talagang we discussed na, are you okay with that? So, because... I can't. I, in fact, during um, when I went to AIM and inquired in the admissions office, I brought him with me, and so that he could also talk to the to the um, school about you know. So I even asked, "Can I be pregnant while doing my MBA? Do you advise it?" And they said no. Because <laughs> of the stress, I'm <laughs> yeah. guessing, right? Yeah. So even if it's the last term, na, and then I just get pregnant, <laughs> and then maybe I give birth during graduation. <laughs> do, do you think I can do that? No, we don't advise it. So, <laughs> but the timing, diba? <laughs> no. Para pina plan ko para I'll just give birth when I graduate and then get pregnant, you know. Yeah, diba? <laughs> yeah. No time wasted. Yeah, right? exactly. I love it. But no they were very wasted. honest and said we don't recommend it. Um cuz the person I was speaking to was also pregnant or uh, yeah. you know, mm. about to give birth. So, she also took a pre MBA before. So, there um, you know, I think when you're at a crossroads it's not something you decide on your own, especially when it comes to family. Mm-hmm. So that was my recent crossroads when two years ago, at 2016, I wanted to take my MBA. And I asked Paolo, would you be okay if I took this first instead of us having a baby? And now that I'm done, time to be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, I knew Del was gonna like insert something there, but thank God. <laughs> Andy took the reins, Del. <laughs> No, no, yeah, ako. Kailangan may, may ano, uh, I should be, uh, <laughs> a little bit more, uh, formal today. <laughs> You're in a closet. There's, there's nothing formal there's about that. Formal then. anymore. I know. Um, you know, I, I just wanna, wanted to say, cause I, as Risa is talking, I'm really taking it in, cause I can't see her, but I can't feel her energy. I just really liked what she said about her husband. Mm-hmm. Um, about admiring, the one you're with because yes. yeah I I feel that for my husband and I I hardly hear that from a lot of women I hear that they love their 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 husbands we that's common no but I think that the fact that you admire your husband yeah it's it's there's something about it that there's respect there there's respect embedded in admiration eh? diba? mm-hmm. and uh Cause if, just judging by what you have told us since the interview started, you know, a, a woman who owns her business, she has an MBA, she's a mother, mm-hmm. she was a model, she she created her own business. I mean, to a lot of men, that can be very, very intimidating. And yet here you are, you have a husband who supports you, who that's an awesome place to be in. Yeah. And I can't help but feel like, girl... Grab your hair. Oh no! I feel like the admiration is also because it's mutual. Like sh- he has a very, I'm sure, great admiration for you as well, the same way that yeah. you are with him, and that's why you guys are able to make this magic together. Yeah. So go okay. do and an- make another kid. <laughs> Put up another brand. Yeah. Who knows, right? Oh, iron oh, is oh, still very hot. The <laughs> oh, oh, MBA so pwede na mag baby. Nah. Like, I just drop the like, M at a B Y. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Very nice. No, but I, yeah. it just amazes me how like in the span of three years you had two kids and a brand. Pero nakapagod lang yeah. isipin, no? Pero yun nga. Like, support system yeah uh, Paolo's there. also very hands on dad mm-hmm. so um, I, I actually during um, the time our daughters were born we weren't very uh, they didn't have yayas yeah. um, 
So we wanted to do everything ourselves um, until bathing them, um, oh, feeding them. Okay. Prepare. I think the only thing I didn't do was wash their clothes. But everything, sterilizing their yeah. bottles, everything, you know, I did it and Paolo did it with me. So it was such a teamwork that it didn't make it hard because the only thing Paolo didn't do as a mom, um, it was breastfeed. But everything a mom could do, he did it. I'm sure oh, if, nice. if he could, he probably yeah. would have, right? He would have helped in the breastfeeding. That's that's great. So, if you know, if, if anybody out there is, is thinking of... And because I was thinking about this over the weekend. There are a lot of mom... They call them mompreneurs now, mm-hmm. right? Mompreneurs. And, and I asked my husband. We got into this really deep conversation at like 4 p.m. And we were like blown away. So, I was like, do you like what you do for a living? Like... Some people, what they like to do, their hobbies. Do they? Can they transform all of those hobbies into a career? Not all hobbies yes. will be profitable. Yes. So you have to be very honest to yourself. Because mm-hmm. what if your hobby isn't something the market needs? Mm-hmm. A That's lot of people kasi start a business. Oh, I love um, phone charms. I've, so I'm going to yeah. make a business selling phone charms. But... You have to also understand. You just, you don't just make a business because you like something, but you have to understand the market also. Mm-hmm. Are people gonna buy it? Is it relevant to them? Um, you know, is it something that people need? And for Happy Skin, it, there was a gap. No one was filling because it was all imported or local, na drugstore brands. Yeah, there was nothing in between that um, didn't cost as much as the imported brands. Was priced somewhere in the middle, mm-hmm. but gave the quality of imported brands. Yeah, and there was no one making or providing skin carrying makeup so mm-hmm. that was a gap that we were really filling and so if you start a business those are the things you need to think of not just because you like something you do it now if your hobby can't be something you can earn from then find a job that will allow you to have free time to do that hobby or the things you're passionate about okay this is important though because it doesn't mean you have to drop your hobby or your passion or your yeah, passion yeah. right you find a job that'll complement or is it like Allow you to still have time yeah. for your passion. Yeah. Um, so I think that's important. So maybe, you know, your job isn't, uh, you know, I think you have to balance practicality also. Like anyone mm-hmm. who starts a business, you want it to earn naturally. Yeah. Um, because you also need the funds to sustain and run your business. That's and right. combining it with passion or something you're passionate about, that's a really great combination because business yes. is hard. There will be times you'll want to give up. So if you don't love what you do, it will be you might give up so have you, have you ever have you ever felt like giving up in 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 recent like what is your when was the last time you thought of oh, i can't do this anymore this is too much i i, I, I don't i i've never felt that because i've i guess parang anak ko mm-hmm. it's like you know you saw it before it was mm-hmm. born when it was born and until today so it's Hard to let go of something you're so passionate about. Mm-hmm. Like, I never thought twice about it. I jumped into it and, you know, I gave my blood, sweat, and tears, especially yeah. when it was starting. It was such a small team. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we, uh, you know, when we were starting, even my Paolo and my Enzo, my eldest son, were helping out. Um, they were packing. They <laughs> so were, cute. We had an assembly line. We were yeah. printing, putting in the press kits, packing, sealing. So, wow. oh, you do this, you do that. And then, okay, label and we'll deliver out or sort the products and shoot everything in. So, it was nice. It, you know, it became a family thing. Mm-mm. We we didn't have every, you know, a big team yet. But yeah. they chipped in. It just all worked because out. They, yeah. So, there. Back to your question. I think if you can't be, you know, turn your passion or hobby into a business be in a job that allows you free time so you can still have time for things you're passionate about I love that okay it's 10.56 nice. on the clock before we let you go Risa why should people grab this book Read My Lips What It Takes to Build a World Class Homegrown Brand okay um, I, I think the book is so relevant today because more than ever there's so many women or so many people who want to get into business but they don't know where to start and I want to be able to share everything I learned both good and bad mm-hmm. I don't want to sugarcoat it so that when people start a business they really know what they're getting into mm-hmm. and a lot of the business books out there are too technical and not everyone has a business background um, or is equipped with a business background to start a business so when they grab a hold of business books after a few pages or a chapter they give up and yeah. 
I wanted something that's real, relatable, honest, and pretty. conversational. And it's pretty. Know, it, it has to be. It's the business of beauty. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> So, um, there, I wanted to arm people with something that's relevant and practical. Yeah. Like, very conversational, easy to digest, so that you it really is. take home the learnings and you don't forget it. It really is. And when I was writing that book, um, I wanted to make sure everything you find there is not something you can find in Google or YouTube. Mm-hmm. Because today, content, oh, um, how it's to, everywhere. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, everything. For everything you need to know, you can find on Google or YouTube. So I wanted to make sure the content was very unique. It shares a personal journey. I also interviewed uh, the country's biggest yes. businessmen. Yes. And they also share a lot of, uh, you know, very personal answers that you can't find anywhere else when, in that. another business book. I so, love that. Um, I call that chapter an MBA in a minute because mm-hmm. these are all the people I also look up to in business. And if I had an elevator moment with them, that's what I wanted to ask. And I, I felt so happy that that's everyone great. I wanted to interview said yes. Um, so there. And there's this, the second half of the book is more focused on beauty. And mm-hmm. you know, I, you might be wondering, why is there a beauty section or something that focuses on beauty? Um, well, first, because happy skin is about being in the business of beauty. And second, you know, being a businesswoman or an entrepreneur isn't just having the skills. You also have to have the right values, the right mindset, and, you know, a strong soul. Mm-hmm. Because it's not easy. And that chapter, you know, helps, I hope helps women or the readers realize the other kinds of skills mm-hmm. that you need to survive in business. Good then a smile there, Risa. Caught right? me off guard. I, <laughs> I got lost. So, so, so Risa, where, where, can they, where can they get the book? <laughs> They'll stop laughing. <laughs> um, the book is available in national bookstores, mm-hmm. branches nationwide. If you don't have time to hit a mall, you can also buy it at nationalbookstore.com. And I also want to plug, I'm going to be at the Cosmo Beauty Con on wow. August 31. Yes. So you, you, um, I'll be talking about but, you know, if you want to start a beauty brand, that's perfect because that's what I'll be talking about. And I'll also be there to sign copies of the book uh-huh. if they, you know, after the talk. Okay. Oh, that's great. How exciting. Yes. When is that happening again? August 31 August at 31. SMX in Pasay um, for the Cosmo Beauty Con. So just follow the Cosmopolitan Philippines yeah. Instagram account for all the details. So get your book already. We're giving out two, by the way. Yes, we are. On the show. So we posted it already. All you have to do is comment your favorite uh, lippy shade from Happy Skin. And we hey. will... Yeah. Ikaw din meron. So, wait, send me na. So, so, sasagutin ko ha. Papadala nyo sa akin pag nanalo ako. <laughs> Game. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm typing in the comment section now. Galing. You have to, ano ah. Galing. At the Mothership page. Risa, thank you so much for yeah, joining us so today. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so it's much. Thank you so, so It's always fun to bond with co-moms. Yeah. It, it is. You know, you learn something new every day. Every conversation. And it's just nice to know that um, parang so, I think Okay, never mind Kaya mo yan No! <laughs> Labas mo Labas No, because I'm kind of like In this stage in my life Where like Okay, I'm a mom But I want to do something else You know And mm-hmm. it's just this It's just Where to start How to do it And then how to deal With mom guilt Yes, mom guilt I, I want to Before we go yes, I, I want to ask you about that Let's you do know, it um, at the start, you're really going to feel guilty because you feel like you're going to leave your kids yes. to the, under the care of someone else instead of you. But I realized that you shouldn't feel guilty. So any mom who's a working mom or wants to start a business, don't feel guilty because at the end of the day, whatever you're doing will set the example for them. It was that way for my own mom. Um, she was a journalist for mm-hmm. the, uh, um, the newspaper and you know she had working hours. So... It was through her example that made me realize this is what hard work means. This is what excellence means. This is what passion means. So you set the example for your kids. So don't feel so guilty because you're showing them the path that they should take in the future. I love it. Thank you. Uh, And I I think it's also one more thing is that you have daughters. And your daughters are going to look at the example, the life you've you've shown them and feel like I'm a woman. I, I can be a mother. But I can also be an entrepreneur. And that's such mm-hmm. a powerful message. It is. Yeah. It is. The boss. It really is. God bless you, Risa. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. The show for moms. Bye-bye, mom. The Mother Show on Magic 89.9.